Hey guys and welcome to Hardy Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about quite a prevalent pathology and that is hyperglycemia. So let's get started. So let's take a closer look at the word hyperglycemia and let's break it down a bit further. So the word hyper means above normal, glyco means pertaining to sugar, and emia means in the blood. So if we put that word together, we get hyperglycemia, which refers to high levels of sugar or glucose in the blood. So now that we know what the word means, let's take a closer look at what are the causes of hyperglycemia. So hyperglycemia can be caused by type 1 diabetes, and in this disease, the body might suffer an insulin deficiency. Another cause could be type 2 diabetes, and here the body usually has enough insulin, but the insulin doesn't function as effectively as it should. Another cause for hyperglycemia can be the patient eats more than he planned or exercise less than he planned, which can cause a surge of sugar in the blood. Hyperglycemia can also be caused by stress from an illness, such as a cold or flu, or an ongoing infection. So these are all contributing factors to hyperglycemia, or high levels of sugar in the blood. Continuing with causes, we can also have another cause of hyperglycemia, and that is due to a phenomenon known as Dawn's phenomenon. So you may have experienced a surge of hormones that the body produces daily around 4 a.m. to 8 a.m., this is called the dawn phenomenon and describes a rise in the blood glucose level during the early hours of the morning, particularly among patients who have normal glucose levels throughout most of the night. The rise in glucose is thought to be due to several factors, including the following. So the normal increase in the morning cortisol levels, the cumulative effect of increased nocturnal growth hormone and insulinopenia, as a result of the length of time since the last injection. So this is usually in diabetic patients. So the dawn phenomenon is basically this rapid increase in sugar that occurs during this certain time in the morning. So usually around 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. And as we mentioned, it has several contributing factors. So usually the growth hormone is released during the night and decreases the peripheral glucose uptake, which causes the hyperglycemia. We also have the patient taking their last insulin injection and then going to bed so that eight or nine hours of sleep can severely increase the blood sugar level since the last insulin injection was taken so long ago. And of course, we have the normal increases in cortisol levels, which are also said to increase the blood glucose levels. So these are all contributing factors to the dawn phenomenon. And this can also go on to cause hyperglycemia. So what are some signs and symptoms of hyperglycemia? So patients may describe the following. They are frequently hungrier than normal. They are losing more weight despite eating more. They are thirstier than normal. They have to visit the bathroom more frequently. They have a higher than average volume of glucose in the urine and they are more tired than usual. So now let's talk about some complications of hyperglycemia. So we'll begin with the skin complications. So the first thing the patients can suffer from is something called diabetic dermopathy. And here we have oval or circular scaly light brown patches which appear on the legs of the patient. And this is what it actually looks like, the diabetic dermopathy. We can then have acanthosis nigricans. And here we have raised brown patches which appear on the neck, the groin and the armpits. So as we can see in these images, we have these dark raised patches on the neck region of the patient as well as under the armpits. We can then have diabetic blisters, which usually develop on the extremities and are painless. So this is what a diabetic blister actually looks like. So moving on, we can also have other complications of hyperglycemia, such as nerve damage. So here the patient may suffer from peripheral neuropathy. Here there is nerve damage in the feet and hands, which lead to numbness, tingling, and weakness. We can also have autonomic neuropathy in the patient, and here the autonomic processes in the body start to dysfunction. So the patient loses bladder control, sexual function, and digestive functions. Some of the eye complications these patients may suffer from. So patients may develop diabetic retinopathy, and here the damage is caused to blood vessels in the back of the eye, leading to vision loss and possible blindness. 
Having diabetes and constantly high blood pressure can also increase the risk of glaucoma by 40% and cataract by 60%. Another complication of hyperglycemia is diabetic ketoacidosis. So when there is insufficient insulin in the body and the body cannot use the glucose that is available, the body will try to look for another source of energy. So it will use fats for energy instead. The body produces ketones from breaking down fats. So if we have large amounts of glucose, but we can't use them, but we still need energy for all our daily processes, the body will start to break down fats. And when it breaks down fats, we have a byproduct which is produced, and that is ketone bodies. So our bodies cannot handle high amounts of ketones, and while it can get rid of some of the ketones in the urine, ketones may eventually build up, causing the blood to become too acidic. This can lead to severe complications, such as diabetic ketoacidosis. So diabetic ketoacidosis increases the level of acid in the patient's body, and without treatment can lead to a diabetic coma. Some of the signs and symptoms of diabetic ketoacidosis include breathlessness, fruity smelling breath, vomiting and feeling sick, and suffering from a parched mouth. So if you look at this little image on my right hand side, we see here the patient is down, his breath smells like juicy fruit gum, he has chrysmal respirations, he's thirsty, he's dehydrated, he has tachycardia, which is an increase in the heart rate, hypotension, which means a low blood pressure, Acidosis, again, from that increase in ketone bodies, we have an acidic environment in the blood. We have a high blood sugar of more than 240 milligrams per deciliter. We have hyperkalemia, which means an increase in the potassium in the blood. And we have polyuria, which is an increase in the amount of urine that is produced. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of hyperglycemia. So we can instruct the patient to do some exercise because physical activity can decrease the levels of excess glucose in the blood. We can also instruct the patient to moderate their diet. So eating less during mealtimes and snacking less, as well as focusing on low sugar foods, helps keep the amount of glucose at the level that the body can handle. We can also use glucose altering medications. So the doctor may prescribe a glucose reducing medication such as insulin. And that brings us to the end of this video on hyperglycemia. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.